All right. All right, setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. All right. All right, Kanan, I think we are live on Facebook. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Welcome everyone to our 16th Color Bold Spotlight of the Month. I'm here with Kanan Davenport, or Kay the Barber. Um, and I just want to introduce you to the spotlight. Uh, this is again the 16th spotlight that Colorbold has put on. And my name is Mia. I work for Extension for Outer Gaming and Winnebago counties. And I work specifically with entrepreneurs of color and working very closely with the Colorbold Business Association to support people of color and, and entrepreneurs of color in, in this area. Kanan Danford is a co founder of the thriving Black owned. T tapered's barbershop in downtown Appleton, and his team provides a unique skill set of hair and cosmetology. Founded in 2018, Tapper's is a young yet thriving business, not only committed to barber excellence, but also to inclusion. So, Kanan, I'm just so excited to be here with you today. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for the invite. It's good to know I'm sweet 16. I'm number 16 on the list. I know. Couldn't, it couldn't be better, right? <laughs> That's a good number. And I just want to um, encourage everyone that is tuning in to join in the, the conversation. So please use the chat box to ask question for, questions for Kanan uh, as we're talking. So could you please tell us a little bit more about how Tapper's Barbershop got started, Kanan? Um, Tapers got started with me and a, um, a, a, a good, great friend of mine, a uh, brother to me, Michael Linwood, known as Wood the Barber. Um, we talked and we decided that, you know, we needed to go a different route that we was, you know, that we were already in. If anybody knows me, I've been in the area for about 16 years. Um, before Tapers, we were at King's Barbershop uh, on College Avenue. Um, and you know, it, it 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 just came to a point. It was time to move on to something bigger and better. And Tapers was was formed, and um, it turned out to be the best the best thing we ever did. Why was it the best thing? Why? Why? You said why? Yeah, yeah. Tell us more about that. Why was it a good it, move? Well, um, the shop that we was at before tapers it was really small um one way in one way out kind of was like it, it was kind of like you ever been to a um a, a great restaurant that's in a bad spot or like a hole in the wall type of restaurant but they got some food in there but gotcha that was kind of kings in my opinion so um okay the tapers now reflects the talent of the barbers that's, uh, you know, at Tapers. So it was a day for us. So it was, it was just making sure that you had the space that you needed to really thrive. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. definitely. okay, awesome. Now, I, I have done a little bit of research. It, it really seems like it's a little bit more than a barber shop. It's also kind of like a safe space for people of color in the Appleton area. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and how you built that safe space? Um, the safe space was built by everybody on the team being on the same page. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm ex-military, so I, I, I don't know if I got certain ways about doing things, but, um, I, I kind of like things to be a certain type of way. I like everything to be uniform. I like, um, um, it's not just a safe space for people of color. That is one great point. But it's a safe space for everybody. It's a safe space for the LGBT community, which is huge. It's, it's a safe space for, I mean, our, our clients, um, we have a wide var variety of clients, you know, so it's not no race or ethnicity that doesn't come through Tapers Barbershop. Um, however, it has always been a safe place for Blacks, Black people, and, um, you know, um, we do many things in the community we we do get togethers it's always like kind of a meeting ground for certain situations that uh come up in the black community and i love it yeah and i know you did you did some pop-up vaccination um spots during the pandemic as well 
Yes, we did a pop-up clinic um, in the basement of Tapers. Um, it turned out very successful. Um, we wasn't really trying to force it on anybody. I made it perfectly clear that the clinic is for people who would like to get the vaccine. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, you know, having the community come through and, you know, once again, it, you know, something productive, for, you know, for, for the community here in Appleton. Yeah, right. So when you got started with, with Tapers in 2018, you know, obviously as a business owner, it's so important to feel supported uh, when you start your business. Um, now that support can be formal, it can be informal, you know, it could be, you know, loans, grants, or whatever. It could be through friends, family, et cetera. So how did this business support look like when you got started, Kanan? Well, um, I always say word of mouth is everything. Um, the community com completely supports us. You know, they've been supporting us for a long time now. Um, a, a big portion of our clientele is word of mouth. You know, uh, we, yeah. we try to treat our customers, our clients to the best of our ability. We try to create a clean, safe environment for them. So um, that word spreads just as fast as it would spread if we had a dirty shop that had a terrible environment. Um, so, right. you know, that that's that's been very crucial for us yeah and i hear that a lot in in these interviews people talk about how important the word of mouth having those relationships you build relationships as a business owner and as a business and without those like you're nothing right and so that that rings true for a lot of people i think um since you got started how do you feel like your business have grown or changed um, I would say that our business has gotten even more involved in the community since we started. Uh, we started off small. We started off doing like back to school block parties for the kids and we give away free book bags, school supplies, haircuts, braids, that type of thing. But now I'm starting to see us shift to um, a pillar in the community where, you know, like we talked about earlier, you know, um, people feel comfortable coming, people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. A lot of events we do, Tapers Talk, and actually we birthed a nonprofit through Tapers Barbershop. So that's another great thing. What, that's why I'm explaining that um, yeah, please even go deeper ahead. in the community. So <clears throat> that's a goal of mine and I, and I love it. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about the Tapers Talk Talks? Uh, the Tapers talk started um, in the wake of the George Floyd murder. Um, it was a lot of, you know, it, uh, I think a lot of us really didn't know what to do, really didn't know how to handle the situation. You, you know, you're angry, but you're hurt. Um, and I just felt the need to get the community together. Anybody who wants to come and talk, come and vent, you know, mm -hmm. I left the floor open to where, you know, you, you, could, you could come and stress your concerns, you know, not even just about that incident, but about other, other situations that happen in our community that's being built. Um, I felt that that was very important. Thanks for sharing about that. And in terms of your business changing, and do you feel like there's any lessons that you could be sharing with other business owners out there that might be wanting to start their business or are growing their business? Um, I would say stay focused, you know, uh, work hard. Um, if I could add, you know, um, a lot of people don't know that I had to close a barbershop before. A lot of people don't know um, that, you know, probably 16 years ago, I had a shop called uh, Complexions Barbershop. It was my very first barbershop that I opened. And, um, it came a point a lot of a lot of lot of lot of things that I wasn't ready for in the business world was you know kind of approaching and you know along with stress that I had from the building owner uh, being African American, um, I had to actually tell my barbers don't pay booth you know we got to close up in a month. Um, I said that to say some people might have quit then. You know, um, it was hard. That was one of the hardest things I had to do to tell the team, like, we got to close up. But I kept pushing. I kept pushing. I kept working. I never forget my daddy say, if I were you, 
I'll go ahead and put me some lights in that garage and I'll keep cutting. And that, that's not what I wanted to hear, but I did that for a while, you know, and, and I just, you know, working kept, you know, grinding and, and, and I feel very proud um, of where Tapers is right now. I feel like Tapers is built on a solid foundation and I feel like we're here to last, we're here to stay, you know, and yeah. uh, just, that's, that's just a quick lesson that I learned, uh, you know, don't give up. Thank you. So when you're talking about um, your current team, do you feel like, um, are there some strengths that you all have that will make, that makes your barbershop stronger and more resilient? Because it's not just you, right? It, you have other people that are also part of the business. Yes, um, the, the, our, our team is the most valuable team that I've, uh, I mean, I love everybody in the shop. I feel like they love me too. We family, we work together very well. Um, and one thing about a team is I feel like clients and customers can understand when it's, when it's tension. I feel mm -hmm. like this tension between us, it shows not only in our work, it shows in our customer service, it shows in other areas of the business. So I'm very grateful. Um, I can't stress this enough. My team is my family, you know, and, 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 and it's rare to find a team, uh, most of men and women, that's as solid as the team that we have at Tapers. I love that, that you're sharing that, Kanan, because I think um, sometimes people won't won't look at tension maybe as, as a thing that could actually be destructive for, for business performance, but of course also for the relationships within the business. So if you do notice tension, how do you, how do you resolve it? You know, it, it? It's time for a meeting. You know, we just sit down and talk. You know, we got to get together and we got we to gotta talk things out. Um, and, and always remember, you know, it, it's, it's love too. You got you to gotta speak to people with love. You got to speak to people a certain type of way you got to speak to people the way you would want to be spoken to right. um it's it's a huge respect factor there you know that um i have respect for everybody and i'm sure everybody has respect for me and you know when you respect people you you talk to people a certain type of way you talk to them with you talk to them with love and that's kind of how i i like to lead well i think that makes a big difference uh to have that kind of leadership style and especially in an area that has some like passive aggressive tendencies. I think it's important to like, okay, let's look at this, but do it with compassion and with love and respect. That's, that's really important. Um, and you're getting some love here, Kanan. We're getting the lows, Kim Yad is chiming in, and Andre Johnson is saying, appreciate you guys at Tapered. And Kim Yad is asking you, how did your experience closing your first shop affect your goals and leadership in your new shop? Um, that's a that's a great question. What what it really taught me is that, like I said earlier, don't give up. But the other thing it taught me is to build a strong team. You know, like the team got to be strong. You know, and I I said it earlier. I'm a, I I can't stress it enough. Team is important, team important, especially in the barber, the barber industry where, you know, it's so competitive to where it's hard to get a group of people together that's to have that jealousy, envious factor and support each other in the barber game. So um, that's, I hope I answered it, you know, but to me, team is everything. Well, I, I wanted, to, I'm very interested in this. So how do you, um, how do you really, how do you make sure that you build that strong team, Kanan? What are the ingredients that you're looking for when you're building a team? Number one is vision. You know, you, I feel like first you got to have a vision of what you, what you want things to be, what you want them to look like. And then you got to share the vision with the team. Some people won't be with the vision, you know, we have lost people as well, you know, that, that don't see things the same, you know. So really, it's just a, a you got to make sure you have a group of like minded individuals, a group of uh, people that, you know, non BS type of people that really love what they're doing, you know, 
Um, it's a difference. You, it's a difference when you got a team that love what they're doing, opposed to a team that's just trying to get some money. You know what I mean? Like it okay. shows your work. You know, um, and and I would say pick your team very cautiously, very carefully. You know, um, yeah, that's that's hey, what I. Hey, those are those are some really really impactful words, um, and I think Thank a lot you. of people need to probably hear that. And especially in these days, it's very hard to find um, employ employees and to kind of balance, like, to be sure to bring in people that really serves your mission and vision, but, you know, making sure that they stay and that you have the same vision. And then also knowing that there's a shortage, shortage out there, too, of workers. Oh, that's what Kimiata is now following up on here. She's saying... In a climate where people are struggling finding employees, do you have any tips on finding new employees? Um, I could say seek them out. You know, like um, I, I, okay, I'm gonna share this. Uh, we have a we have a barber. We have a barber on our team. Uh, her name is Terry Barber Queen. Um. I've, you know, I, I pretty much know a lot of the barbers in the area, you know, I watch, you know, I kind of pay attention and um, her personality and her skill set. Um, I felt like I had to try to recruit her. Um, you did? I did. You did. Say I stole her. <laughs> <laughs> But I had to recruit her, you know, and so so what I'm saying is um, I felt that she can fit in. I felt that she was somebody that would add to the team, not take away from the team. I hope Terry don't bring her up, but it was just one of those situations. I felt like she would add to not take away. Do I see other barbers that I feel uh, would add to? Sure. Do I see other barbers that I feel would take away? Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you build something, you take so much, well, me, me, myself, I take so much pride in, 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 in tapers and what we built with tapers. You know, you don't want people to, you don't want anybody to come along and mess that up. You know, you don't want anybody to come along that don't fit the standards that you're trying to create. And um, it could be detrimental. It could be detrimental. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say, you know, just to Kimyata, you know, just, um, Number one, you may have to be patient. You know, you can't just go with the first opportunity that comes up, you know, be patient and, and, and seek out the right individuals, you know, um, help, help the individuals that you seek out, make it easy for them, you know, like whatever you can do, you know. Um, I think that's pretty much all I got on that right now. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. And I got to say, like, in a situation where you are being sought out, that's a huge honor, right? If somebody calls you up or, or approaches you and say, I want you on my team. I right. mean, it's going to be hard, very hard to say no if somebody sees that in you. And, and, they, and you can explain why that is a good right. match. So I think that, kind, I mean, it will take more time probably, but it will also probably leverage your business more too. Yes, and sometimes, you know, like, Somebody may have the talent, but they don't have the right mindset. And, right. you know, you got to be cautious of that, of that as well. That's, you know, I've learned that through, through experience as well. You're getting some more love here. The minister is saying, proud of you, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, more people are tuning in here. Thanks. Thanks for all the love. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you. I appreciate the love. It's so wonderful. Um, Kenan, is there anything that you're particularly proud of, of your business? I feel like you maybe probably answered this question already. You're talking about your team. And I'm going to say the same know. thing. <laughs> My team, the team, of course. Uh, and I'm proud of. I'm proud that our team can cut any type of texture of hair. You know, sometimes you go in a barbershop, even where I'm from. Um, where I'm from is 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 pretty much all black. So just imagine, you know, if, if, a, if a, a white person come to the barber, certain barber shops, they, every, the barbers may not be able to cut that person's hair, vice versa. You know, if it's a white barber shop where a black person come in, sometimes they're not able to cut that hair. I'm grateful that 
me along with all the barbers at Tapers, um, we we blur that line. It's mm -hmm. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, if you come to Tapers, even just to hang out, you would notice it's white people, black people, Hispanic people, Asian people, transgender people. We have a transgender barber. Um, it's it's just it's awesome. So. That's really amazing. I I love I love that. And you're giving get, getting more love on Facebook here. <laughs> Milton, Milton Davenport. Uh, that's sending my daddy. Love. I think that's my daddy. There you go. That, that, <laughs> that sounds like it. Uh, Andrea is asking you, how hard was it in finding your original team of barbers during your time of getting complexions started? Um, complexions? Complexions, uh, it kind of, comp. It was, it was me, my brother, my brother also um, was a barber, um, Wood the barber, P the barber, Joe the barber. Um, that was in the beginning. And like I said, it was just about having that vision and being able to express the vision and either, you know, people was with it or they wasn't, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, that's with complexions. So that was many ago, though. There you go. Well, Kimiata, she likes to ask questions. She's got another one for you. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Um, she's asking you how important is business getting involved in the community, pros and cons, like having that that community involvement? Uh, first off, I really don't see, well, I don't see any cons that come to mind right now. Uh, only pros. Um, I'm grateful enough to have been in this area and I gotta share this. I'm grateful enough to be been in this area long enough where just imagine if it's been times where I started cutting a client, he was 10 years old. His, his moms bring him to the shop. Before you know it, that same client is graduating graduating from high school. I'm giving him his 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 senior picture cut or his prom cut. Yeah. Next thing you know, he's getting married. He you cutting his hair for his marriage. Next wow. Day, he's bringing his son in to you, and now you cutting his son hair. Uh, to me, that's 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 a certain fulfillment that, you know, being part of a community, you can't not love, you know, not to even mention um, being part of the community also gets you plenty of support, you know. Uh, when people see you doing good in a the community, they want to come and support you. And I've been grateful enough to have that. Yeah, and you're getting more love. You're getting more love here on Facebook Live. I love all you all too. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> a lot of love. Um, so when you look out for your barber shop in about five to ten years, Kanan, what do you see for tapers? Um, I see us even more involved in the community. I see us um, possibly with another shop. Um, I just see, I just see um a bright future. I just see us us being even more, even more uh, concrete in the in the in the community. I see us even more, you know, prosperous. I see, I see uh, different members on the team starting other shops. I see, uh, you know, just good things. I believe you. I believe you, and you're getting even more love. A lot of love. <laughs> And Kimiata is saying, keep up the good work. Mandy Davenport, uh, so proud of you, Kanan. Yeah, so there's a lot of love out there for you. And and I can tell, like, you're, you're giving it right back. So that's what <laughs> happens, right? Anything that's else it. you want to share, share with uh, fellow business owners of color in Northeast Wisconsin or worldwide? Because, you know, we have we have pretty big, big reach here on, on Facebook Live. So anything you want to share while we're we're closing out today. Um, I would just say, just don't give up on your dreams. Whatever you whatever you want to do, you can do it. Uh, don't let nobody discourage you from your dreams. Stay focused on your dreams. You know, your no dream is too small. You know, 
Um, sometimes you, we, we get into this thing where we just want to make all the money in the world, but all the money in the world don't necessarily make you happy. You know, you have to do something that you love every day in order to get a certain type of fulfillment out of your life. You know, you got to be around people that, uh, that encourage you and push you. You know, you got to be around people that, um, that love you. You got to be around people that, you know, uh, respect you and, and value you. Um, work hard. Don't give up. That's, you know, that's just off the top of my head. Yeah, those are great. Those are great reminders. Uh, so I just want to thank you so much, Kanan, for being here with us today and for sharing your story and your words of wisdom. Um, we're just so grateful to have you on the spotlight. Well, thank you so much for thinking of me and inviting me. I definitely appreciate it. Absolutely. And um, everybody who tuned in, thank you so much. We really do appreciate all the love and all the questions. And we will be having another spotlight in April. So stay tuned. Um, and until then, take care. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Love you all. Bye.